Imagine you want to create a character in your game. And to describe that character, you want to have a variable for its name, for its energy, the amount of coins, and keep track whether the character is alive or not. So if we're just using variables, we could create a variable for each one of these things, and we could define its name, energy, coins, if it's alive or not. But what happens when you want to create a second character? You're going to run into the issue that you're, you'll have to create another four variables and call them something different, like second name or second energy. And what if you then want to create 10 characters? All of these variable names are going to start to get very confusing and you're going to have all these variables floating around. It's going to be hard to work like that. So there is a better way. And that better approach, that better way is, is to use a class. Think of a class as a blueprint that we can create to define an object, in this case, a character. This class of us can have member variables, which are variables that belong to the class and they can be accessed anywhere inside this class. In this manner, we can create a variable to keep track of the character's name, its energy, coins, and whether it's alive or not. We can create then instances of that character. And what that means is after we've defined the blueprint, we can use that blueprint to actually create multiple characters for our game. So by using the name of the class, as a data type, we can create variables that consist of new characters that we are creating. A class is basically a blueprint. A class definition doesn't create any object. What actually makes things happen is when you create instances of that class. The same analogy with a cooking recipe. You have a recipe that doesn't mean you have a cake. You actually have to make a cake. So that is how you should see classes. That is the best, the easiest way to understand the concept. Now, how can we get access to these member variables? We saw how we could create new characters, but we haven't seen how we can access them. And the truth is that the way they are defined here, we cannot access them outside the class. We need to add something to that. What we need to add is the public keyword, which will make these classes, uh, these uh, member variables public. That means that they can be accessed from outside the class. And when you have created public variables like that, after you instantiate a new class, you can easily access those variables and change their values, just like you would do with normal variables. And that brings us to the concept of encapsulation. In C Sharp, you, if you want to have a public variable, you need to write the word public. You can also be explicit and say that a, um, a variable is going to be private. And that means that that variable cannot be accessed from the outside. You cannot access that variable from outside your class. If you don't write anything, which is what I had done before, that by default makes variables private in C Sharp. So having this public and private approach, which is called encapsulation in object-oriented programming, means that sometimes you'll be able to access variables right away uh, without any intermediary if, if they are public, but if they are private, the only way to access them will be through a method. In Unity, when you create a public variable, so see how this is the script that we, that we created, hello world, when we create a public variable like that, it actually shows on the inspector and then we can assign a variable to uh, a value to that variable. So that is how it works in Unity. If you create a private vari uh, variable, it's not going to show like that in the inspector. And we are now due to really talk about methods, which I've mentioned before. The best way to think about methods is the best analogy is that of a factory. Methods can have input and they can also have output. The difference with a factory though is that some methods don't need to have any input. They cannot have any input at all. And also some methods are not gonna have any output. So that is the main difference with a factory. But for everything else, it is a very good analogy. This is how we can declare a method in a class. So see how we have a class here that has our, the properties, the, the public member variables of our character name, energy, coins, and we're also declaring a public method. That means a method that we can access from outside the class. 
see how we're calling our method print name and inside that method all that happens is that we're printing the name to the user and I will talk about void in just a little bit. So if we wanted to execute that method to call that method we need to create an, an instance of our character we can assign values to those public variables um, in this case there shouldn't be a is alive because I didn't add that here so that it actually shouldn't be there and we can print the hero's name in this way so that is how we can call this method here returning a value the output of the factory I'm creating here another method which is called get score that method what it does it creates a variable in a local variable inside that method of type integer and the value of that variable will be coins multiplied by 100. Let's say that we want to give this character 100 points for every coin that they collected. And we want to now return that, send that as an output outside of our method. So that uh, a few things here to notice is that we have typed here int instead of void like before. So that means that we are returning a variable of type int. And that is exactly what we're doing. So we return that value with the return keyword. Also, it's important to mention one more time that methods can access all member variables. If you had public or private member variables, this would be a way you could you would be able to access them in your methods like that. And now when we actually call that method, see how we are declaring a variable here called player score and that is equal to hero.getScore. And when we do hero.getScore, what is happening is that we're calling the getScore method and that will return an integer. And that integer is placed in our player score. And then we can show that to the user or do anything we want with it. Void means that there is no value returned. So we've, we've seen void a few times. It basically means this is a factory that doesn't produce anything that doesn't give any output. It could do things like showing something to the user or many other things, but it doesn't have a return value. And now the other part of the factory, how do you get things in the factory? How do you pass in parameters? We've been doing that all along. So if you look at the print method that we've used a few times, it actually already has parameters. So you simply pass these parameters inside the brackets when you execute the method. So let's look at an example. Let's create another method called getScore, but this time our getScore method will have two parameters. The, the character, the score of the character will be a base score, so it will have that value as a minimum, and then we're gonna define how many points we wanna give the player or the character per coin that they've collected. So as you can see the operation here, the calculation of the score is simply the base score plus how many coins it got multiplied by the points per coin that we are giving and that is returned that is passed back and the way to pass these parameters would be the same thing we've done with print in this case where we have two parameters so we are passing two values and see how these two values are integers so they need to match the type that is specified in the in the method uh, signature the method definition We can also have default values for our member variables. If we don't specify the value of energy in this case, once we create characters, they will have an energy of 100 by default. If we don't specify a default and we don't enter any number, the value will be null. And now it is challenge time. So we're going to have a challenge that is a two stage challenge. And after you have a try, I will show you the solution. So let me explain what this challenge consists in. Um, you're going to go to your to your hello world script, which uh, make sure it's empty. It only has that start method. And the first thing you uh, you're going to do is create a new method called print game. And this method, all it's going to do is going to print in the console the name, the type of game that you want to make the most. So for example, if your dream game idea is a uh, a VR RPG, just print VR RPG or any any game idea that you have in mind. Then the second step is to actually, we're going to execute that in start. So you create your method 
and then you execute it in start. And by the way, you create it here. So you create your method here, and then you're going to execute it. And then you're going to run the game so that we can actually see that in the console. So you're going to run the game. And after you've done that, you completed part one. And now part two consists on creating a public variable of type string called my game idea. And you're going to place that here. So you're going to place your public variable here. And after that, you are going to go to the inspector and enter a value for that game idea. As I mentioned, when you create a public variable, that will appear here and you can enter a value. So it will appear on under, your, under the game object that has the script and it will appear on the script component. Um, and then you're gonna modify your print game method. Instead of just printing the game that you want to make the most, it's just gonna print whatever you've entered in this my game idea variable. So that is a challenge. And if, it's, if, if, if you get stuck at any point, um, we are going to go through all the steps in uh, right now, basically. So pause the video, try your best, and then join us to see the solution. All right, welcome back. I had a coffee and it was amazing. No, kidding. I've been here all along. So let's actually solve this challenge. I'm going to create a new method here, void print game. Um, this is not going to have any parameters, so I'm just going to type the, the, the bracket. And as you, as you saw, I just type one bracket and the other one is created for me. So code editors make life easy by doing those things. I'm opening now my curly brackets, which are the, the burger bums that contain everything that goes in this method. And now we're going to print a message to the user. And I'm going to go with that VR RPG idea. So I want to make that kind of game. And now in my start method, I'm going to execute this print game method. So I'm just going to type print game and close the brackets so that we're executing that. Now let's go to Unity and play the game and see if that works. So I press play and yep, we can see that VR RPG in here. So we got part one of the challenge solved. Now, second part of the challenge was to create a public variable of type string called my game idea. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to type public string my game idea and I'm going to save. You have to save in order for this to work. So I've saved and now I go back to Unity and I have to usually click on Unity somewhere. And what is really happening under the hood is that the script is being compiled. That means it's being transformed to zeros and ones and that's something that um, Unity, if, if, if the script is compiled, it means that there are no errors and therefore we can see this here. If there was any error, we would see it in the console. So now I see my game idea and I'm going to type a different game idea. So let's, uh, let's type a VR adventure game like Zelda. Um, so I've typed that. But I actually, I'm not really doing anything with this yet. So that was the other part of the challenge was to modify your print games method to show the value of my game idea. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go here and I'm going to delete that hard coded string and I'm going to paste the name of my variable, which is this one here. So let's go now back to Unity, uh, run our game and we can see our message. So we completed the challenge. So thanks for watching this lesson and I will see you on the next one.